I only know of one thing that you should definitely not do when you're trying to get your CompTIA Security Plus certification exam, and that is procrastinate. You are just holding yourself back from your destiny. I know a bunch of things that you can do to help yourself get the Security Plus certification exam. Here's the first one. Get a hold of these materials. CompTIA Cert Master Learn Lessons. Okay, I've passed my A+, I've passed my Network Plus. For the A+, I used a lot of cheaper materials. For the Network Plus, I had access to these. I think these are awesome. Go ahead and read all of it. Read all of this. Check this out. They have Introduction, Lesson 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 21. They have 21 lessons. Every single one of these is like a paragraph or seven. It'll maybe take you half an hour, maybe take you an hour per section. So that's 21 hours of studying right there. Um, I think that's one of the best ways to prep your mind with the material and get a good idea of where you are at, okay? I've been working in IT for over a year now. I just finished my bachelor's degree in computer information systems or something. I forget what the degree is actually for, but I have it, right? That's important. My point is, if you have no experience in IT, maybe spend a little bit more time studying. If you have more experience in IT, you can probably plan to spend a little bit less time studying. And I want to say real quick, if you don't have access to these materials, um, there are places you can go to find them if you are so inclined. If you know where to look, you can find what you need on the internet. So, Keep that in mind. There's a lot of free resources other than CompTIA reading materials. Uh, you can probably get the same information from free materials um, and you can pass the test just fine. So I'm inviting you along on my journey. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna read all of this material. I'm gonna go through the practice questions. If I do bad on a section, I'm gonna go back and reread that section. Maybe watch a YouTube video. Actually, I forgot to mention, the first thing you should do to prepare for the Security Plus certification exam is watch all of my videos. All of them. Every single one. There's one that I talked about what my plan was for the future. I don't think anyone watched that one. I'm going to put the link down below. Watch that one. Let me know what you think. After you watch all my videos, um, then read the material. Yeah, because that'll, because that'll help you learn. I think it's a great way to prep your mind. Your goal when you're reading this material is not to memorize and completely understand everything. You're kind of, it's more like laying out the space that you have to work with, okay? And then as you study and as you do flashcards and as you do practice questions and you review challenging concepts, you're filling in that space. But this is kind of outlining what you need to know to pass the test, okay? Obviously you can read what, like, what does the test cover? And you can read the, the bullet points of what you need to know, but actually reading through the material will start to get that information in your mind. You'll see something and you'll be like, I totally know what that is. And you'll see something else and you'll be like, I have no idea what that is. That's the stuff you write down. I'm also taking notes as I'm reading. Uh, as you can see here, an example of some great notes. Huh? So take notes while you read, make flashcards. See, I got these, bam, at, at the Asian store. I got these at Daiso. Make flashcards. If you want to use digital flashcards, fine. There's a cool uh, program called Anki. It's free. A-N-K-I. That's cool. Uh, make flashcards. Review them every day. That Flashcards are best for um, things that you just need to memorize, okay? Maybe these are, like for the Network Plus, it was port numbers were a huge one for me. Uh, another one might be um, different, like protocols different protocols and what they stand for, right? Like 802.11a, 802.11b, 802.11g, etc. okay? So I'm just getting into the Security Plus content. Now, I've also have some hands-on practice in doing like virtual machine labs for the performance-based questions, okay? And I'm hoping that that's gonna help me with those. Where I'm at right now is I've read through the first six lessons of the material for CompTIA Cert Master Learn. And what I wanna do with you guys real quick is go through some of their questions. Now, I highly encourage you guys to buy this if you're able to. If not, I'm sure there's some way you can get your hands on it. Lesson four, identifying social engineering and malware. All right, as I'm doing these questions, guys, do them along with me, write down your answers on a rule. Tell me down below in the comments how many you got right. 
or if you had a question about something, let me know and I'll try to explain it. <clears throat> a system administrator has just entered their credentials to enter a secure server room. As the administrator is entering the door, someone is walking up to the door with their hands full of equipment and appears to be struggling to move items around while searching for their credentials. The system administrator quickly begins to assist by getting items out of the person's hands and they walk into the room together. This person is not an employee, but someone attempting to gain unauthorized access to the server room. What type of social engineering has occurred? This social engineering would be consensus or social proof. The options are, I'm sorry, the options are familiarity or liking, consensus, social proof, authority and intimidation, identity fraud. Familiarity and liking would be like if you were like, hey, Jim, don't you remember me from the party? Uh, can you let me in? I forgot my key. Um, consensus or social proof would be like, I'm trying to access this room and I have a bunch of equipment, so clearly I'm supposed to go into this room, you know. Once you let me in, you don't even have to say that. You can just show it, right? That's why it's powerful because it's like unspoken social pressure that they're using. Authority and intimidation would be coming in like, I'm from the, the I'm from the police station. There's a fire. Let me in, right? Identity fraud. Uh, yes, I am the uh, I'm the auditor from such and such third party organization. I'm here to audit, right? That could also sort of be authority. And intimidation but you get the point and i was right it's consensus slash social proof all right next time i'm going to read the answers and i'm going to read my thought process behind it i'm going to read my thoughts i'm going to read my thoughts to you guys a malicious party adds malware to a popular video game and offers free copies to users the party's objective is to require the cd to be inserted during use wow that was just i just had flashbacks from the early 2000s 90s this software will gain administrative rights change system files and may hide from detection without the knowledge or consent of the user consider the malware characteristics and determine which may be used okay malware characteristics gain administrative rights so that would be yeah not convinced on any of these change system files may hide from detection without the knowledge Okay, and the fact that it's disguised as a game, I'm already thinking Trojan, Trojan horse, right? Okay, the options are spyware, keylogger, rootkit, or Trojan. Uh, my bad. Let me zoom in for you guys. Bam! Now you can see, right? Yeah, now you can see all the all the good good. Okay, we're super zoomed in. This is awesome. Sorry about that. Okay, spyware, keylogger, rootkit, or Trojan. Trojan, yes. Uh. Keylogger, no. Spyware, no. I guess Rootkit because of the administrative rights. Uh, rootkit, technically, it's malware that burrows so deep that it loads before the operating system, so it can't be removed by reformatting Windows. So that may or may not apply here. It might just be Trojan. Let's see. No, it was Rootkit too. Okay, cool. Next question. An individual receives a text message that appears to be a warning from a well-known order fulfillment company informing them that the carrier has tried to deliver this package twice and that if the individual does not contact them to claim it, the package will not be delivered. Analyze the scenario and select the social engineering technique being used. A uh, text message? So the options are smishing, phishing, vishing, and prepending. Smishing, you can see the SMS are capitalized. That stands for short message system. Here in the United States, everyone says text message, but when I lived overseas, everyone said SMS. So that's, that's why it's SMS is capitalized for, for, for text messages. Okay, so, so it's definitely smishing. Um, phishing would be through email. That's the traditional form of phishing. That's why it's just phishing spelled differently. Vishing would be voice phishing. Vishing, right, over the phone. I wonder if phishing originally was done over the phone. Maybe that's why it's PH. Anyway, prepending, uh, I forget what that is. And A is correct. Did you get A correct? If you got A correct, high five. Pew. All right. Next question. A hacker is able to install a keylogger on a user's computer. What is the hacker attempting to do in this situation? Well, the options are key management, encryption, obfuscation, or steal confidential information. He's trying to install a keylogger. So key management doesn't make sense. Encryption, no, no, no. Steal confidential information because if you're typing on your computer and you're like, 
my credit card number is four six five seven eight nine three four two one nine. He can log those keystrokes. Now he has your credit card number. All he has to do is make a script that scans all keys logged for a certain combination of keys, and he can identify personal information like a social, a credit card number, uh, date of birth, address, all that cool stuff. Done. D. Done. Correct. Did you get it correct? I bet you did. Which situation would require keyboard encryption software be installed on a computer to set up single sign-on privileges, to comply with input validation practices, for the purpose of key management, to protect against spyware? Um, single sign-on privileges, that doesn't make sense. C also doesn't really make sense to me. D also does not really make sense to me, so I'm going to say, oh, you know what? D? There could be a case for D. But I'm going to go with B because input validation, you know, like, so they're encrypting their keyboard software. So that makes me think they're trying to avoid um, key loggers and or like the the dongle from Hack5 that you can like plug into a computer and it's USB, but it bash bunny or duck cyber duck i don't know it's like a it's like a dongle that says that it's a keyboard and then it issues commands to the computer and boom you hacked them whoa so maybe spyware but it could also be to comply with input validation and that seems more likely so that's what i'm picking and i was wrong it was to protect against spyware if you were not like me and you clicked d then you get an a an employee is having a coffee at an outdoor coffee shop and is not taking precautions against someone watching their screen while working on a company project. A person a few tables over watches the employee enter their credentials and then takes photos of the work they're completing with their smartphone. Oh yeah, that's how we take photos now like this. Not like this. We do this. Which form of social engineering is being used in this situation? Uh, vishing, which we know because I talked about it before, is like voice phone phishing lunchtime attack is when someone eats their lunch and you attack them just kidding it's when someone eats their lunch and they go away from their computer at work and then you go to their computer and then you, you got in shoulder surfing is when you look over someone's shoulder which is like exactly what's happening in the situation so i'm going to say it's c man in the middle attack would be intercepting network traffic and redirecting it or spoofing the intended destination so that they think that they're going to the right place but they're really not and it's correct okay an employee calls it personnel and states that they received an email with a pdf document to review after the pdf was opened the system has not been performing correctly an it admin conducted a scan and found a virus determine the two classes of viruses the computer most likely has select all that apply email pdf pdf opened system poop it admin scan virus two classes two classes boot sector macro script non-resident i'm gonna say macro because macros can be attached to documents and then when you open the document the macro runs and it does bad things i'm also gonna say script i don't actually know what that means i mean i don't know what it means in this context um, it's not a boot sector because it doesn't say anything about reformatting the computer or, or like having to destroy the boot sector. Um, script is, you know, it's like, it's something you write and then it, it does things. So there could, there, it might be non-resident. I don't know. I was right. I knew it. <laughs> Both macro and script can use PDF as vector. Done. Answer. A user's PC is infected with a virus that appears to be memory resident and loads any time it is booted from an external universal serial bus, also known as a USB thumb drive. Examine the following options and determine which describes the infection type. A virus in memory that loads when is when any time it is booted from an external bling. So, a uh, boot virus that seems apt, befitting the situation. Um, and we don't have to pick all that apply, so I don't have to worry about what the other ones are. I'm sorry, I forgot to read the answers. The options are script virus, boot virus, worm, or spyware. Script virus, I'm assuming, is a virus that runs a script. Boot virus, I'm assuming, is a virus that runs when you boot. And since this is running when they boot from the thumb drive, this is probably a boot virus. A worm is a malware, a type of malware that does not require a host file or user interaction, and typically it propagates itself across systems automatically. Spyware is malware designed to spy on the user.
B is correct. Did you get B correct? Fist bump. Bing! All right. Uh, number 17. Analyze the following attacks to determine which best illustrates a farming attack. Notice this is farming with a PH. Farming attack. A customer gets an email that appears to be from their insurance company. The email contains a link that takes the user to a fake site that looks just like the real insurance company site. An employee gets a call from someone claiming to be in the IT department. The caller says there was a problem with the network, so they need the employee's password in order to restore the network privileges. A company's sales department often has after-hour training sessions, so they order dinner delivery online from the restaurant across the street. An attacker is able to access the company's network by compromising the restaurant's unsecure website. A customer enters the correct URL address of their bank, which should point to the IP address 172.1244. However, the browser goes to 1682511, which is a fake site designed to look exactly like the real bank site. Okay, I thought one was correct, but since it requires the sending of the email, technically that would be a phishing and a farming attack combined, right? The call would be social engineering, uh, impersonation, um, pretexting, right? That would be a supply chain attack. Number C, letter A, letter three would be a supply chain attack. Um, D, I believe, is the correct answer, and it is the correct answer. It is. It is the correct answer. Yes. Good job. Which of the following depicts ways a malicious attacker can gain access to a target's network? Ethical hacking, phishing, shoulder surfing, influence campaign. Gain access is the key term here, and also malicious. Malicious rules out ethical hacking. Ethical hacking is not malicious. If it's malicious, it's un unethical. Phishing would work. Shoulder surfing could work if you cleaned network access credentials over the shoulder. Influence campaign, not so much. Gentles and lady men, we got 90% correct. How did you do? Did you get 100%? If you got 100%, I, I salute you. Thank you for watching this video. That is all for now. Goodbye.